Climate change is melting permafrost in the Arctic at a rapid speed, releasing methane gases into the atmosphere. Methane gas has a much bigger potent to cause global warming than greenhouse gases. The current rate of melting and release of methane could have severe consequences in the coming years. Already are scientists seeing changes in temperature and frequency of swamps in the Arctic. Shortly, the carbon cycle includes dead animals and plants getting pressed down into the ground, creating coal and natural gas. Methane is created from dead microorganisms in the tropics and is released by rising into the air from swamps. A long time ago, the Arctic was a swampy marshland filled with methane wetlands. Today, it is covered by ice capturing the methane gas close to the surface under the ice extent. As the ice melts due to climate change, Methane is being released into the atmosphere at an unnatural speed that the Earth can't handle. The methane gases are speeding up climate change, and scientists have now measured that it can have larger negative impacts than carbon dioxide emissions. Earth is made up out of five spheres that include the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the ecosphere, the lithosphere, and the biosphere. Currently, the release of methane gas is taking more than usual from the lithosphere and putting it into the atmosphere. Our atmosphere is then filled with more than usual of carbon dioxide, greenhouse gases and methane, all contributing to climate change. The topic discussed in the article is important enough to be in the news because we all know that climate change is worsening Earth. Now that scientists have proof that methane gas are speeding up global warming, that is something people should be informed about. This is the natural carbon cycle. And this is the natural water cycle. As you can see, there's evaporation from both oceans and lakes. Then there is condensation transportation and precipitation. There's snow melt runoff from snow on the mountain and surface flow back into lakes and ocean. Some water also infiltrates and then percolates into the groundwater. That is then either taken up by plants, later transpirated into the air again, or flown into the oceans. The changes in the carbon cycle, such as the methane emissions, will also have an impact on the water cycle. As average temperatures rise and Earth gets warmer, there will be more evaporation and all snow on mountains will melt. That will first cause floods and then drought because all the snow will have melted. This is an example of how the carbon and water cycle are connected. So this image is the water cycle with warmer temperature. As you can see, there is more evaporation, more precipitation, but no snow on the mountains, therefore no snow melt runoff, making the water flow back to lakes less, therefore also having consequences such as less infiltration and percolation, which then leads to less groundwater, and there will be conflicts with both animals and plants for how to get fresh water. The main step that needs to be taken in order to minimize or stop methane release is to minimize carbon emissions. Carbon emissions are the main cause for the warming of the Arctic. In order to do this, there are two solutions that one can do to stop the huge release of carbon dioxide. First, 
to minimize the unnatural carbon dioxide emissions, we should stop using cars as much as we do and use public transport more often. Also, the cars that are used should run on biogas and other things uh, and other fuels that are renewable energy. This will stop the excavation of natural gas from the lithosphere and use other things such as trash to create new renewable energy instead. The second step is to enforce laws that filters and cleaning systems must be used on all factories across the globe. There should be no exceptions. If we take these two steps, we can minimize CO2 releases which will in turn slow down arctic ice melting and methane release. This was melting permafrost and methane release, Earth Cycle Summative Assessment, March 9, 2015, in Science 8 with Mr. Rosenfield. Presentation by me, Samuel Hoyts.